This is the tutorial video for the Reface DX Voice fixed carrier example. So the purpose of this video is to let you hear what happens when we start using fixed frequency carriers set to very low values. So uh, you can see in this example we're using algorithm 1 which has our stack of modulators 2, 3, and 4 all feeding into our carrier operator 1. And what I've done here that's a little different is used a fixed setting for our carrier operator 1 and set its value at a very, very low frequency, just 1 hertz. So what I want to do is let you hear what this sounds like and explain what's going on. First thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn off my pitch modulation vibrato so we can hear the interaction of what's going on with just operators 1 and 2. I've uh, previously turned off operators 3 and 4 here. Anyway, let's play a key and listen to what we hear. So what you're hearing is this beating effect that's going on. And what this is, it's another version of uh, an FM type of detuning that is created by the FM math of causing these reflected or mirrored harmonics. Basically what's happening is with the operator 1 being set at this low frequency value is we are creating a mirror of our waveform that's coming from our 234 stack that is offset by a value of 1 hertz or whatever the value we set for our carrier operator 1. And again because it's this FM type of detuning every harmonic in the harmonic series of our waveform is detuned the exact same amount. Unlike regular detuning where the second harmonic beats twice as fast as the fundamental, the third three times, the fourth four times, and that creates that classic uh, example of detuning being very rich. Because everything is detuned by the same amount, each one of those harmonics beats at the same rate, which is why it sounds like there's not just a little detuned chorus thing going on, but also that beating that sort of sounds like amplitude modulation or a tremolo. So to give you a contrast on what this sounds like when we have our normal ratio mode, uh, this is just the waveform and what it sounds like from our operators 1 and 2 where we have ratio values for both. Again, let's turn this back to fixed. And now you're going to hear it do that FM detuning beating effect at a value of 1 hertz. Okay, now the reason why it's not perfectly symmetric like a sine wave is because we have a touch of feedback here on our operator 1. I'll turn this to 0, so now we just get a regular and even sine wave pulsing effect. So basically, as we start putting some feedback in here, we start wave shaping that pulsing effect, and that's why we've got that slight syncopation. So, as again, I mentioned, what we're going to hear as our final resulting timbre is essentially going to be the waveform that's created by our three operators. So let's turn these all on. So you can hear what timbre I've set up here with these ratios of 1, 0.00 for operator 2, 2.00 for operator 3, and 4.00 for operator 4. You can see I have a lot of square feedback set fairly high, and those of you may notice that this 1 to 2 to 4 is creating sort of a square wave harmonic series on its own already. So let's hear this. <laughs> So it's a kind of a buzzy, fm -y, weird, square type of um, timbre there. And you also notice I've got my envelope set up, so our initial levels, 1, 2, and 3, are all set uh, at 100 for ops 2 and 3, and it goes up to 127 at key off. And operator 4 um, does something very similar, except that it gradually increases as you hold the note, and again, at key off goes back up. So that's why you hear the little brightness on release. So let's go back and turn our operator 1 to ratio mode to hear the waveform in uh, the standard FM uh, situation without this uh, fixed carrier detuning effect. So 
So you can hear, in terms of the overall timbre or harmonic structure, there isn't any changes that are really going on uh, as a result of changing our carrier from ratio to fixed mode. The only thing that's going on is we're hearing the beating effect of all the harmonics that are created being offset by our fixed frequency value here. So you're going to see as I start turning this up, we're going to speed up that effect. So now as we get above 10 hertz or so, instead of being that smooth, uh, pulsating chorus tremolo type of sound. Uh, we're actually getting into areas that uh, we're starting to create some, um, you know, side bands or ring modulator or those types of effects. Anyway, back to our example. Let's put this back here. And now let's actually build out the sound. So as I describe in the sound Mondo article, um, this is set up to um, basically walk you through on putting some things together to make a usable sound out of this. Because right now it's pretty boring. It doesn't really do a whole lot. So the first thing I'm going to do here is essentially build in that speed change that I demonstrated that happens when we change the value here for our uh, operator 1 value. So I've set up our pitch EG to start at a level of 24, go down to a level of minus 11, stop at a, or sustain at level 3 of minus 12, and then go back up to level 24 at key off at these rates I've set here. So I'm going to turn that on for our carry operator 1. So now the speed of our pulsating effect will change as we trigger a key, hold the key, and then let off a key. Let's uh, play that so you can hear what that sounds like. So now we have some interesting motion going on that will actually give us kind of an interesting pad sound. So we got to flesh it out. So as I mentioned in the article, we're turning on the uh, effect one to flanger to thicken up the sound. And we're also going to use the chorus here on effect two to spread out the stereo image so it's really, really wide. So now check it out what this sounds like. <laughs> So one of the neat articulation differences we have between uh, held chords and notes that are played more quickly is that the pitch envelope of operator 1 only goes down to the lower levels you sustain a note. So if we play short notes, the pulsing effect stays relatively quick because the pitch EG hasn't dropped down to those lower levels. So it's kind of neat how you can you know, play a held chord and over the top of that play some quicker notes. So we've been able to create a pretty cool pad sound from this effect. Now, as I also showed, the symmetry is dictated by our feedback level here of um, our operator 1. So we're going to go to some extreme values of our sawtooth wave and listen to what changes in the way that the sound beats. If we take it all the way up, we get some weird stuff going on. So you hear that we're almost getting um, a really harsh wave shape going on. If we change it to the square wave, now it's going to be very similar. But because of the difference in wave shape between square and saw, it seems like it's twice as fast for any given frequency. So I'm going to put this back to 20 so you can hear that speed versus this speed. Now put it 
it back to square and let's put it up really high again and it's going to basically sound like a gate. <laughs> You also notice it has a little more detuning character in it as it's sweeping from high to low in that sawtooth waveform. This is basically what happens when we use the square wave setting. Our harmonics are instantly shifting two different detunes amounts as opposed to smoothly going back and forth between it as we heard with the other one. So let's just go put everybody back and again play our finished sound fixed carrier example. <laughs> So I hope you found this useful in hearing what it sounds like when you have a fixed frequency carrier set to a low sub-audio setting. Until next time.